it's Rob the History Smith here with another little military uh, adjacent, firearm adjacent uh, content for you. I'm going to try to keep this to a short one, so like less than 10 minutes hopefully. Uh, so what are we looking at today? This is not a chauffeur. It's not a chauffeur. It has nothing to do with Jews or cars. This is a powder horn, and you can see it's actually a horn. Uh, this is a broken piece of crop powder horn. This is, well, pouch. I don't know what you call these flasks. Sorry, powder flask. This is a leather flask. This is an original one. Uh, this is also original. They're both from about 1800s. Uh, I don't believe it's any earlier than that. Uh, this was probably British military. Uh, this one, it's hard to say. It could be military. It could be civilian. But either way, it's very well made. But it has some issues we need to address. This is just a cheap replica made probably in China or India somewhere in the last 10 or 15 years. Parts rattling around in there because I already broke it. Uh, but I'm going to use the parts in here to fix this guy. Only issue with this one here is the powder measure works perfectly. So you put your thumb over there. Release your powder. Put your thumb over the edge. Release your powder. Powder comes out. And then you have a measure that you can pour directly into your rifle or pistol. And you have two different layers here. I'll get into a close-up of this. I'll show you the close-up marks. I'm not going to be doing too much to the leather one today. Uh, but you have what appears to be a half pound, I believe it says, on there. I'll try to take some close-ups and post them when I do the video editing. Nice little knurled button. And you have your measures there. Um, so, one ounce or... It says... Uh, one and a quarter, but I would assume that's actually probably a quarter ounce, not one and a quarter. I don't know why there's a one in front of it. Uh, but either way, it's not an ounce of black powder. So I will try to, this OZ there, uh, or OG if you're from LA. But anyways, there's the, the markings, and all you do is you uh, undo the screw here, and move the part up there and suddenly you have a different powder measure all right guys so the problem with this one here is 150 some odd years the stitching's gone uh i wouldn't try fixing the stitching uh if anything i i just wouldn't mess with this too much so because it is a nice um powder flask and you're not going to be using them like this you can use a modern one if you want a powder flask these guys are uh, wall hanger safe queens all right, guys. So moving on to the the big horny one, the big horny one here. So we have some issues. This spring, oops, oops. This spring here, which opens and closes the that little. Well, you can't see it. It's black, and there's a flap in there. Let's see. Unscrew that. So this spring here, you can see the. It opening and closing so there should be a spring to automatically keep this shut uh, on the side here it's kind of nice it's got a nice little gradated uh, scale for how much powder you're gonna be doing I'm not too too sure how it relates to the actual amount you're getting because I'm not even sure how to read it they don't even look like numbers to me there you go hey it works so the other issue, that part's missing, sorry guys, missing a screw, so that's wobbly. Uh, back here, it's even worse. I'm going to go to a wide shot for you. So on the back here, it's even worse. There you go. Okay, so let's learn together, shall we? My main goal right now, let's see. I'm going to salvage the parts from the old, uh, from the new one first. Get my baby screwdriver in there. Back out that screw. There's one. And I like to put them in my little screwdriver kit so I don't lose them. There's two. Tres. There we go. So that comes off. It's actually not badly made. Um, could be fixed. 
Uh, I don't really know where the pin... I can't remember what happened. There was a pin on here. Set around something like that. Anyways. Not a big deal. That's the broken part there. The Essentially this pit. Bit. It was not a very well made flask. So. Anyways. I don't want to deal with that. What I want to do now. Is. Get. This off. tricky part is I broke a screwdriver already trying to back it out um, question is do I need to back it out so we look at this here with a combination of as long as you don't tear the brass you should be okay so right there you can see the holes are now Deformed. Let me get to a close up on number two. So, unfortunately, I deformed the holes, but the material's all there. So, with a bit of tamping on my tiny little anvil, I should be able to get these holes back in their proper condition. Gives you a nice look at the inside of the, the powder flask there. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's brass, lead solder. Um, don't know it's just oxidization on them inside there if they coated it with something so shots aren't the best working on the fly here none of this is uh pre-scripted or anything like that so now i want to get this piece off as well so i can fix it uh what i have done is i've made a little custom screwdriver out of a broken mini screwdriver the issue i'm having here is it spins but doesn't want to come out let's try you want to be very careful and very sparing on anything that has a finish or a lacquer. And I'm almost positive this horn has got a lacquer on it. So I want to kind of keep it to the metal. This stuff is pretty caustic. I mean, it's not going to eat your skin, but it will eat paint. It will eat your neighborhood. It will eat everything you hold dear. And you'll be left homeless with nobody to love. If you get it on the wrong stuff. If you use it properly, you're fine. I'm thinking I'm going to do that same process of prying the brass off around the screws and then worrying about putting it on afterwards. So because I'm gonna have to heat this, I think. I don't know how it's so frozen. Let's see if I can get some movement. That's something. That's not what I'm looking for. I don't care if I break that. This is the part that's already broken. It's this screw. The screw has got the biggest attitude, but it could be what happened here was the classic um, different materials. So brass and steel will tend to, with moisture, um, seize up to each other. Let me get my big boy vice grips. I'm gonna grab that head. Clamp. Slight twist. Clamping off center. And you can see it's off center. Kind of. Let's see. It does feel like it's starting to move, so that's good. Yeah, it's starting to move. So let's see if we can get it with a screwdriver now. Hopefully you guys can see. I don't know if you can.
Ouch! And I stabbed myself at the last second. There we go. That is off. I'm looking at that. I think this needs some cleaning. Normally, I would say don't mess with stuff like that, but that's pretty bad looking. So I want to clean this screw up. That's about right. Okay, so how am I going to fix this? I think first thing I can do is just hit it with a wire brush. And I'm not aggressive on the screw. Ow. Let's go to camera two here. So it's no longer dirty. I wouldn't call it clean. You can still see the smushy mushy marks. So for that, you just want to take a hammer. This should be better polished than this, but good enough for what I'm doing here. And you want to carefully tap the head of the screw and push that metal, that metal, back to where it belongs. In hell, metal is made by the devil. So I'm not, I'm literally just taking away the hammer and just letting it tap it. Hopefully you can see now that there's less of a burr or anything sticking up. I can even, one of my, ouch. <clears throat> Pokey pokey. One of my new favorite little devices. It's um it's a diamond cutoff wheel. But I like using it for the flat surface for honing um, sears and things like that. So what I'm gonna do here, start it up. I'm not going for a lot. Because it has a diamond coating on both sides, it will act like watch your fingers. It will act like a, a file. The trick though is, I'm gonna stop that for a second and tighten up the vise. Just don't wanna wreck those threads. That's why you don't wanna go too hard on the vise. Okay. So carefully. So, go back to camera two. Now you can see that that channel is thicker, deeper, smoother, better. What I'm going to do there, because I don't really like the way that looks right now, is I'm going to grab a touch of super blue, which I'm running out of. Normally, I would apply this with those. Well, here we go. Here we go. Uh, this is what I like to apply with the the Q-tip. That way, you're not wasting too much chemical. So what I'm doing here is I'm just because this was um, steel or iron, I just wanted to touch it up so it's not having any bright spots. Use a little more liquid to get down in there. There we go. Sorry about the hands, guys. So that was uh, just super blue. A very old bottle of super blue. 
Super blue, insta blue, 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 blah, 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 whatever. And there's my cleaned up, reblued screw. Okay, hope you guys found that incredibly interesting how to fix a screw. But believe me, it's, I'm joking, but it is one of the boring necessities of gunsmithing. So what am I going to do about that black rim? You can see where the screw came out. This was pretty bright at one point. So, I'm going to go back to the Dremel. Because I don't want to polish it, remember guys? I, I was saying I just want to get the, uh, the grime off. As much as possible. And that is grime. Ah, don't hit the clutch on your... Uh... Just cleaning, nothing else. Not polishing. Getting a little thumb jersey thing there. So, cleaned it up a little bit. You can see some of the brass showing through now. It's not all black. That's the extent I'm going to do for cleaning. So, what's next, you ask? Well, this magic screw and this magic spring. So, spring sits up against that ledge there. This one has a cut there that would normally fit into here. So that's going to be a slight issue. I'm going to have to get rid of that. And then figure out how to peg that in place. I'm thinking just a pin might do. So in the meantime, I'm going to disappear for a quick second and hit this on my grinder because that's Okay, it's gone, ground off. So what I want to do now is put the screw back in and see how things go and what I might need to adjust. It goes to show you what seems to be a little project sometimes ends up being um, not so little when you get down to it. So that's what I'm looking at here. Not a perfect fit, is it? So what do I do? What do I do? It's spring steel, so you can only do so much with it. The idea is you would should be holding it something like that that way when you and it will push it back so let's see what I can do Okay, so I've pushed the spring to expose the hole. This is just a test, because I don't know what's going to happen. Taking that 
pin that someone had put into the other end. I don't think this will work, but since I'm no expert on powder flask, I'm going to give it a shot. Tap that in. To be honest, I thought this would be a simpler project. I think what I'm going to have to do is shallow out that angle. So this little end here. All right. So part of the problem here is I think this angle and this short section here is curving in too much, hooking in. So what I'm going to do is take out the screw again. Again, a lot of this is going to be assembly, disassembly. Uh, we'll see how much fast forwarding I might have to do on this. Grab my pliers. Now again, keep in mind you can break springs easily, especially this stuff. This stuff feels like it wants to break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that I don't recommend doing in, unless you have to, which is um, put my vice grip onto here. I'm going to hope the vice grip will act as a bit of a heat sink in this case. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up this section. You can see the, that uneven arc to it. I want to get rid of that, but I don't want to break the spring. So, I'm annealing the spring. I'm going to have to do it off camera so I don't burn the spring. So you can kind of see the colors changed. What I've done is just got it cherry red. That will anneal, take away any of the, the hardness that it has. Now I can hopefully give it a bit of a bend, straighten it out, and I didn't break it. Now it's very hot. I don't really have a tub, so I'm going to make a mess. Make a mess. Clean the mess. That's something I know most people don't know how to do. The cleaning part, that is. We're all great at making messes. Yep, didn't sacrifice any of that. Any... Didn't compromise any of the rest of the spring. You kind of see how it already lines up with that catch there. So let's see where we're at. I wish the spring was a bit smaller, but beggars can't be choosers. I could cut it down and maybe rebend it. We'll see if that's going to happen. But what I don't want to have to do is retemper the spring. Um, some of you guys, if you guys watched. Any of the forge and fires, you'll know. See there, the it's opening and closing. That's what I want to see. It automatically closed. What I think I can do is probably bring in that, cut off a bit here, bring in that arc. So let's see if I can do that. First thing I want to do is close that arc. Make it a tighter circle. So pop it off, so I can do it by hand. I'm going to grind off a bit right here, and I'll be right back. And I'm millimeters, about a quarter of an inch off the tip, and it gets hot again. So, damp towel. There we go. Close that arch a bit more ah. 
Ouch. Ouch. That it hurt. Again, I don't want to break it. So you see, I it now has more of a um, straighter section here. And that will line up a little bit better with the whole... That hole still doesn't quite line up, but I'm hoping... Let's see if I get this in here. Let's see if I can tweak it a bit. There we go. I think that should work now. Should we put the screw in there? Again, these are threaded, so um, be careful. You don't cross-thread them. Brass is incredibly easy to cross thread just checking that there it is working but not well enough I think I need to tighten that curve a bit more so out comes that once more this is just it's not a gun but this is what gunsmithing is you check you test you check you test you check you test you just keep on going until it, everything kind of works the way you want it to and the problem I'm having now is that gap is very tight so I'm still gonna do turn this on Showing a close up here what I just did. You can see now that instead of having a 90 degree angle, something of a 90 degree angle right here, up and down like that, it's now angled a bit. Let's have a look. I'm going to have to do something about having a pivot point here uh, permanently attached to this. Uh, what I'm seeing here is I could probably reduce the diameter so what I'm going to do is take this off again I said 90% of gunsmithing is assembly disassembly assembly disassembly over and over and over and over until it's brain brain freeze um, what I'm looking for now is a marker so a sharte my sharpie. And what I want to do is just pop it back over place. I want to mark either side of that hole. Either side, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a guideline of how much material I want to move. But what I don't want to do is remove any material in between that gap. That's going to become my... my pivot point for my uh, for my spring there it also becomes the weak point for this too so um, I'm gonna be extra careful when it comes to finishing when it comes to just roughing out the material I'm just gonna take it over to my grinder and do that real fast um, nothing much to see there other than it gets really damn hot when you grind things like this do keep in mind uh, it is spring uh, spring will lose its tension before it hits cherry red so go slowly you don't want to uh, completely destroy your most important quality of your spring, which is your spring. Okay. All right, guys. So you can see I've drawn a line there. So that's how much material I'm going to move, remove. And in between that gap, I'm going to try to keep that from disappearing. And what I'm going to do is All right. So I'm going to eyeball it again. So the hole to the black lines, 
what I'm seeing is pretty much I want to keep a peg about the size of that black piece there going all the way down. So I'm going to just take that. So that's pretty much my peg. I got to remove the rest of that little bit of material there. And I'm going to come across like so. So now I have a little reference. So what you see silver there has got to go. You got to go. It, it gotta go. Here we go. These Dremel sanding drums I have more experience with than anything else. So, things get caliente. And what I want to do now is switch out to a harder bit to give me a crisper edge. I just keep saying ow because it's getting hot. So I'm trying to fit into that hole and let's get some brightness back here. Everything seems so dark now. So I'm trying to get that black line there to fit into that hole. And the distance seems right. The screw hole seems to line up. That seems to line up. But it, the peg is still too wide. So back to more grinding. So no more rough, sharp parts there. I'm just going to grab a very fine round file. Perfectly round. I'm just going to go in where that little peg is with the tip rounded out. Anytime you have a 90 degree angle, a really sharp angle, you send a good chance of breaking that piece of metal there. Now this is not a very long piece, so hopefully it won't get too much torsion on it, but safer than sorry. There we go. Perfection, perfection. Through chaos comes victory. And through victory comes the women. Lucy, Lucy. Lucy! I explode now. That's not being racist. Well, okay, maybe it is, but I worked with people who spoke like that, so. Blame them. So this is brass, very malleable, and you can see where it's misshapen up in there, all that wavy bit, I'm trying to get rid of that, and smush the metal, close that hole up a bit, so when I do put something to mechanically fasten it. it, there's material there for it to grab. Same along here. Oh, this it's going to grow. As I push the metal, this okay. When I push the metal, 
in towards the center, it's going to cause the lip to grow a bit. But in this case, it's not a big deal. Let's see how our fit is this time. A better fit. So I said to you, I'm going to cheat. And how am I going to cheat? Well, I'm cheating for safety reasons. And hopefully it's something nobody will ever see when all is said and done. Simply because it shouldn't be visible. I'm going to be using this stuff here. Um, really anything will do, but I do... I do like this stuff. It has a tendency to stay a bit gooey longer than uh, like soft after it dries, like rubber. So I'm going to be putting a nice heavy application of glue. So those little screws things, I'm going to try to put them back in and make them look nice as possible. But when it comes to function, they're not going to be doing too much. It's this E6000 here. You can get this stuff at Michael's. That's where I get it. Use their little, uh, or, you know, Hobby Lobby, same company. Use their little coupon and get 40% off. Cost you like four bucks for a bottle. Uh, it's useful for a lot of things beyond weirdness like this. So the wind those holes back up again. Back to the idea of what to do about the screws I don't want to bother you guys or bug you guys by slowing down too much but I'm gonna to have to drill some new holes in here to this powder horn did not belong to Davy Crockett so there we go good old-fashioned cheat just like your wife does lucky a screw came out with it okay other screw is out I think what I'm gonna do here is reuse the screws from the top back here There we go. So the, they're just glued in. Uh, they're not going to come anywhere once this, go anywhere once this stuff dries. Uh, you can see the horn up here. It's pretty thick. It's actually quite thick. I'm going to use these screws. These little guys here that I took off of the repro. What I want to do is fix up this brass first. Dokely. Now I can tell you one thing. I look at this right now is when I go to put this back on, that mechanism is going to be awful close to the glue. So I'm going to use the glue very sparingly on the top. Probably just sink it down and maybe miss that section there. Pick up on the outside to make sure it's powder tight. That. So three holes. It can only go one way. Gluing around the edge. I'm not going to even go on the inside there. That's too tight.
that in. I'm just going to clean up here, so hopefully there will be no glue visible when everything dries. This glue is kind of nice, the E6000, it dries perfectly clear, so there's an advantage there. Spelt. Just check the patch one more time, show you guys. That's what you want. So all I need to do now is chain or a bit of hide. Uh, chain seems to be more common, so maybe I'll try to find some vintage chain. Uh, hide is a nice little option because of the way you can make it slide and adjust the length. Uh, I'm going to clean up that because I do not like that. That's a big oopsie daisy. But like I said, this was a personal project. This is not something uh, I'm working on for somebody else. So my oopsie daisies are my problems. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking a super fine, what is this, 3,000? I think it's 3,000 grit. And I'm getting rid of that texture problem that I just created there with that Dremel skipping over the surface. You see it's starting to disappear. But what I'm also starting to do though is murder my patina. We all love patina, don't we? So I gotta figure out how to put that back on. But it's actually not that hard. All right, so I got rid of that spot. Now I have a shiny spot. And I will use the, I believe it's this stuff I like, the G90, duh. G96 Gun Blue. Now you don't need a lot for what I'm doing here. This won't work with every Gun Blue. But it works with this one. You can see it starts to darken already. Did you see that, guys? Careful application. Wipe it off. Don't let it sit. In this case, or you'll get a completely black finish. And we don't want that, do we? I just want to blend it in with the rest. And essentially all you are doing is you're oxidizing the material just the way it would have naturally. But you're going to go in and get the screws. Darken those guys up so they don't look so bright and shiny and new. A little less shiny and new. Get some down deep inside there. There we go. Getting it inside the threads too makes it look like it's... um. Not just aged, but it's got dirt in there. You know it doesn't. I'm gonna go back to the. No, there's no. Exp... Oh, there is an exposed pin. This is gun blue, so it's designed to work on steel, and that's exactly what I'm doing to that pin, so it doesn't look so shiny and new. All right, guys, I am done my powder horn it's gonna take 24 hours for that glue to dry but I went from a broken powder horn to a working powder horn I'm just gonna darken that spring up to give it some age said I was done but creative license my show my time my crap All right, guys, now I'm done. There you go. Just blew that up a bit. Um, generally, you'll find some spring steels don't blue as well as others, but it is what it is. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I really have to cut this down because this became an incredibly long project. Way longer than it should have been. But it's done. Um, it's glued. I can actually put powder in here when this thing's set up and dry. And... Um, if I ever get out there with some of my flintlocks or uh, my old muskets, I'll have a fun time. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Sorry this round long. I hope you like it. Um, 
and yeah so please like and subscribe guys you've been doing great uh it's been a tough month for me so uh but i'll keep on keeping on if you keep on watching thanks and have a great day guys like and subscribe